Hey everybody, it's Nate with Zebros, and today we're going to go over how to install a limit strap kit on a uh, new Polaris Pro R or Turbo R. And on those applications like the XP1000, we supply a divider that's cut down, billet nut, another Honda Talon. Uh, this happens to be a 1000R. The process is going to be the same on those cars, two seaters, four seaters, strap kits are the same. Um, the Pro R and Turbo R is going to have its own individual unique part number because the Turbo R has a little bit shorter rear um, shock assembly, so the strap is a different length. But the process we're going to go over is the same. It's pretty straightforward and easy. Um, one thing to note is we've already got our front straps assembled with the uh, new nut spacer, so it's integrated nut and spacer. And on these, uh, one thing to note is utilize a little bit of blue Loctite and torque these down. You wanna make sure that there's no gap. So I don't, it's kind of hard to see in the video, but there's kind of a recess in here that the nut spacer goes into. And so I put them in a vise and really torque them down and get those pre-assembled. And on the front, you're going to use the longer spacer up top and the shorter spacer down at the bottom and it's going to go on the back of the shock. So let's go over some of those details. The one thing also to note that it is probably the most complicated in this whole process is our upper shock bolt right now is running um, back to front installed stock. We need to flip that bolt around and whether you have you know, the Walker shock or the Fox shock, it's gonna be the same process, I should note that. So first thing we're gonna do is loosen that top shock bolt, and we're gonna flip the bolt around so that we can uh, have it coming front to back, and then we're gonna remove the factory nut, and then this will actually replace the nut on top, and then give us the space to come down, and then this will replace the nut on the bottom. But that top bolt is running the wrong direction from the factory, so we need to flip that around first, and then we can dive into that. So we have the nut off and this is gonna get replaced so we can set the nut to the side and then pull out the, pull out the shock bolt and then we're just gonna turn it around and feed it front to back. On the driver's side, there's a little wire that kind of gets in your way that, that is retained. If you pull that out of the way, it'll help you to get this bolt in and then you can put it back in its little retainer. Okay, now that we got the nut off, you can go ahead up in here and then using your ratchet or wrench, come in here and you're just gonna tighten the bolt into the nut spacer. And then torque this to about 70 foot pounds. All right, so we got our upper one on there and tightened up. Now to do the lower, this bolt doesn't have to be turned around, but we do have to remove the nut. So we're gonna remove the factory nut and set that to the side. And then now that we've got the car on the ground so that it's weighted and it's gotta be settled a little bit also, we can get the car to settle. Then you'll be able to line up your strap. And again, it is by design that the strap is shorter than the actual uh, total length because your strap is gonna stretch. So that's why the car has to be on the ground. When it's not on the ground, you're gonna be a couple inches above your bolt, which that's to account for the amount of stretch that the strap is gonna have based on the length of the strap. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up and torque that to 70 foot pounds. So it's a good idea to, to put, after you get it snug, to put weight on the strap to make sure those eyes line up. And then you can go ahead and torque it to your torque spec, both top and bottom. And then using the strap retainer, I'm gonna come in here and put the strap, you know, up four or five uh, coils so that it keeps the strap away from some of the other moving parts when you're going through the travel, like so. And that's it for the front. So we'll uh, 
go ahead and jump to the back and show you the process in the back. It's basically the same, a little bit easier. You don't have to flip any bolts around, but the spacers actually flip flop. So you're gonna run the long one at the bottom and the short one at the top. So we'll go ahead and go to there. Pro R Turbo R process is gonna be the same. Um, the strap's gonna actually go inboard because there's not enough tire clearance uh, on the outboard side. So, and there's nothing really to interfere with the strap on the inboard, but we've already got our, our uh, nut spacers installed, uh, blue Loctite and they're torqued in a vise. So short spacer is gonna go up top and then the longer spacer is gonna go down at the bottom. And the bolts are actually already turned the right direction. So all we've gotta do is get up in here and take off that factory nut, tighten up the top one, and then take off the lower nut, weight the car, and then spin the lower bolt into our lower nut and then put our retainer on and we're done. So we'll walk through that process. It's kind of hard to see, but then you just thread it on while holding the nut spacer on the back side. Once you get it started, it'll hold itself. Then tighten it down and then we'll hook up the bottom and then torque these at the end. It's, it's important to keep this aligned and straight. It's gonna wanna droop and, and move. So until you get it snug and get some weight on it to hold it in the correct alignment, probably don't wanna torque it all the way, but get it snug and go back and torque this after you have the weight of the tire and wheel hanging on it to hold the strap straight. Loosen our bottom nut. All right, so we got our bottom nut off. We're gonna set that to the side. Now we've got to weight the vehicle so that we can line up our strap. As you can see, it's a couple inches short. So we wanna drop weight the vehicle, and then we'll be able to line that up a lot easier. And then just simply turn the outer bolt with your wrench and feed it into your nut spacer. Again, snug this up and then we'll put weight on the vehicle to hold the strap straight and then we can put a full torque on it. All right, so we've got the top and bottom bolt torqued. Now you're gonna grab your spring strap retainer, feed that in, you know, four or five coils up. Velcro that, and that's gonna help keep the strap from flapping around. And that is it. So the rear's pretty, pretty easy and simple. Again, uh, short spacer on top, long spacer on the bottom. Uh, torque those to 70 foot pounds and put your strap retainer on. And this is gonna help protect not only your shock at full extension and eliminate some of that clanking, uh, but also protect your CVs and just help carry that weight, especially, you know, this is stock tire and wheel. A lot of guys are running 35s, 37s, so you wanna have that strap catching the shock and helping the shock at full extension. It'll prolong the life of a lot of other parts. It's really a good safety feature. It's hard to find a race car these days that isn't running limit straps, so you know that there's a reason for it. So check us out at zebrosracing.com and or reach out to your local Zebros dealer and get your limit straps today. Thanks for watching.